2 of the Harry Bass Jr. Core Collection sale had some spectacular pattern and trial coins on offer. Although we might be used to seeing shield designs on the penny today, the idea is not such a new one at all. This was Charles Barber's proposal for a unified design for both the 1 and 5 cent coins from 1896. This example was struck from pure nickel with other examples known to exist in both bronze and aluminium. Graded as PCGS MS65, this pattern, which predates the Lincoln penny itself by more than a decade, was sold at auction for $6,600. One of the most well-regarded of Charles Barber's coterie of designs surely has to be the Wash Lady Obverse coins. By Barber's design, Liberty was meant to be styled as a so-called society lady, with her hair coiffed back in a loose and playful bun. The design was, however, not received as such, with David Prosky dubbing the design as the Wash Lady coin, perceiving her hair to be hurriedly tied back in a disheveled manner. PCGS graded this 1879 Wash Lady Half Dollar minted in copper as proof 66 brown and at auction it closed for $18,000. The silver 3 cent coin, or Trime as it was colloquially known, was first released in 1851. But two years prior, in 1849, several patterns were produced for this new denomination. First with a numbered 3, and secondly with a Roman numeral 3 on the reverse of the coin, both depicting the standard liberty seated obverse. Then this pattern was created by muling the reverse of each of those coins together. Fewer than a dozen of these coins are known to exist today, with this example graded as PCGS MS65, the silver 3 cent coin was sold at auction for $18,000. One of the more recognizable patterns was designed by Christian Gobrecht and clearly takes liberal inspiration from the Mexican Adriale coin of the day, with its Phrygian cap and glory rays design on the obverse. The curled palm frond design of the reverse, though, is equally distinct for the US coin. PCGS graded this 1836 gold dollar pattern coin as proof 65 cameo, for which it secured a closing bid at auction of $20,400. Surely, a highlight in William Barber's illustrious career are his Amazonian princess designs that unfortunately never made their way into circulation. The coin received its popular sobriquet from the obverse design depicting a seated liberty petting a bald eagle with her outstretched hand, while her other hand holds a sword and rests upon a large shield. The Amazonian Princess. This 1872 half dollar pattern resides in a PCGS slab with the grade of proof 64, and at auction it was sold for $63,000. Following on the Amazonian Silver series proposed by William Barber, he also prepared an Amazonian Gold series that would have completed a circulating typeset. This time, only the head of Liberty is featured on the obverse, wearing a Phrygian cap and a loose ponytail. In the tradition of the era, all of the coins were to share a common design. In this case, the excellent reverse design was to be shared across the silver and gold denominations. It has been suggested that the Amazonian designs, whether gold or silver, may have been inspired by the statues of Ganymede and the Eagle, either by Tarolini or Thorvaldsen, as both date from around the same era. This $10 coin is produced as gilt copper and graded by PCGS as proof 64. At auction, it sold for $50,400. The low relief execution of this 1877 half dollar pattern coin is fairly typical of Charles Barber's overall design philosophy. Although perhaps a little more ornate than we have come to expect from his circulating coins, created a few years before he would be appointed as chief engraver of the US Mint. And you can clearly see the roots or beginnings on the reverse of what would later become his Barber silver coins. This example, the finest known of four coins, was graded as PCGS 
Proof 66, Deep Cameo and sold at auction for $84,000. Much like the entry that is to follow immediately after this one, the gold stellar coin was an attempt to create an international coin. The $4 denomination and consequent gold content was one meant to be nearly interchangeable with the Austrian 8 florin of the same day. Interesting, these coins were apparently offered for sale by the mint in sets of three along with two goloid dollars of a similar composition, first to members of congress and then more broadly towards the public. It is unknown how many of these sets may have been distributed, but today six at least that can be confirmed, to at best maybe 11 possible examples of these 1879 coiled hair stellars are known in aluminium. PCGS gave this coin a grade of proof 64 plus, which was endorsed by CAC for a closing price of $93,000 at auction. The Bigfoot Dollars or Bigfoot International $10 was a novel idea to create an international or, as the reverse legend reads, a ubiquitous coin of sorts that would exist or be accepted anywhere, as long as that anywhere is the United States or the Latin Monetary Union. As the six currencies nestled each within their own intertwined cartouches on the reverse of the coin, along with the intended weight and gold fineness would indicate. However, this coin is also novel in that it is struck not in gold, but rather in nickel, which is an unusual material for a large diameter pattern at the time, due to its innate tensile strength. This might also then explain why both of the only two examples known in nickel each displays a die crack on the obverse. Nickel is a very hard metal and would have damaged the die when these coins were struck. PCGS gave this coin a grade of proof 67 plus cameo which saw it achieve $144,000 at auction's close. Once a coin manages the enviable but near implausible task of acquiring a common nickname with the collecting community, its legend and place within that shared lexicon has all but been assured. This type of romanticizing of specific coins is perfectly illustrated by the case of the shield earring patterns, so named for George Morgan's beguiling obverse design of Lady Liberty, and specifically her patriotic choice of personal adornments. A a beautiful example of the dollar coin is seen here, struck in silver, and of course this is the finest known of the nine confirmed examples. Graded by PCGS as proof 67 plus cameo, it was sold at auction for $210,000. For the collector and student of American numismatics, there are few dates that manage to capture the imagination. 1870s, 1854s. 1796 and most definitely 1804, with the 1804 dollar in particular, and the Plain 4 Eagle being specially created in 1834 for inclusion in diplomatic presentation sets to the King of Siam, the Sultan of Muscat, and the Emperors of Japan and Cochin China. The coin scene here though is not so much a pattern as it is a die trial of that famed coin, struck in silver to test the dies, in essence before striking the official gold coins intended for those sets. In fact, careful research and die studies have revealed evidence of lapping and recutting on these trial coins to prepare the dies to strike the presentation coins. Authenticated by PCGS with a grade of proof 66, it was sold at auction for $408,000. Subscribe to WN and consider watching a video about some rare barber pattern coins that were discovered a few years ago next. For the world numismatic news, I am Numisman saying thank you for watching, keep collecting, and have a fantastic day.